What's up? Baratunde here with a video op-ed. This time it's about Amy Cooper and the incident in Central Park on Memorial Day. Calling the cops on a black person who didn't do nothing wrong. Here we go again. If you don't know what I'm referring to, let me uh, introduce you to the latest incident. Melody M. Cooper, the sister of the man who had the cops called on him, posted this to Twitter. Okay, when Karens take a walk with their dogs off leash in the famous Bramble, it was Bramble in New York Central Park, where it is clearly posted on signs that dogs must be leashed at all times, and someone like my brother, an avid birder, we're going to get into the birding later, politely asks her to put her dog on the leash. Here is what happens. It's about a one-minute video, so hang in. Will you please stop? Sir, I'm asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please, please don't come off. close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to and me. I'm taking pictures of calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. Excuse me? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Amy Cooper, thank you. That was a great lesson in the power of white supremacy and patriarchy. And thank you, Amy Cooper. What stands out to me in this video is, well, I'm reminded. I'm reminded of people who are trained, uh, physically trained to do harm to other people mostly in self-defense, in combat. I'm talking martial arts, uh, jujitsus, and you know, MMA-type fighting, but real practical self-defense stuff, you know, the, the Aikidos and the Taekwondos and the jujitsus. And, and sometimes you hear these stories of people who end up in a bar fight and the other person ends up with like 10 broken bones <laughs> because they went up against a human weapon. Like their body was like almost a registered weapon. And they react so quickly. And so swiftly, they don't even know, they're not conscious of what they're doing. That's how well-trained they are. That's how well-trained Amy Cooper is in white supremacy and the powers of patriarchy. She, in response to being told by Christian Cooper, the man videotaping, that her dogs need to be on the leash, which is true, resisting that call to obey the rules, she instead invokes a higher authority, the powers of Grayskull, in this case, the powers of white supremacy and patriarchy to rush to her defense and to possibly his demise so that he would end up laid out on the asphalt with some cop's knee in his neck, which also happened on the same day in Minneapolis in these United States. She so quickly announced her intentions to call on this power. She didn't think about it. She didn't have to think. It was a reflex. It was reflexive racism. This was some wax on, wax off white supremacy where she had practiced it so much. She had learned it so early that she didn't need somebody to tell her what to do. She knew. And then on the call, she improvises. He's also threatening my dog while she's choking this poor little buddy out. And I can't hear you. And then she adds the emotion and the hysteria. Please send a cop immediately. We know where this story goes. We literally have the tale of the Central Park Five. Who the powers that be came in and swept up because a white woman really was assaulted, but not by them. In this case, she is abusing her power to such an extraordinary degree and so confidently, because she knows she can get away with it. 
which means she probably has done it before. This isn't the first time. You don't pull off moves that smoothly and that quickly your first time out. She is the Mr. Miyagi of this kind of mayhem. She apologized. She did apologize, and I want to acknowledge that and share her apology with you to NBC New York. She sincerely and humbly apologized to everyone, especially to that man, his family, Christian Cooper. It was unacceptable, and I humbly and fully apologize to everyone who's seen that video, everyone that's been offended, everyone who thinks of me in a lower light, and I understand why they do. When I think about the police, I'm such a blessed person. And it's true. I've come to realize today that I think of the police as a protection agency, and unfortunately, this has caused me to realize that there are so many people in this country that don't have that luxury. Look, Amy, that's a start. That's a start, but we see, we see you, and we see what you pulled off. And there have been consequences for Amy, no doubt. Her employer put her on a leave of absence because they're not down with such flagrant racism. Hopefully they're also not down with like fake 911 calls, regardless of whether it's a racial intent or not. You, she lost her dog. Like the people who she adopted the dog from two years ago were like, nah, we're going to take homie back. And you know she, the way she was choked up on him, that might be the best situation in the near term. But she's not going all the way with the apology. And she is right. She has seen the cops as a protection agency, but she did not need protecting. That's the lie in the apology. She was not being threatened with any form of violence. She was being accused rightfully of breaking a rule and asked repeatedly to abide by that rule. She interprets that as a threat. She's not happy that a black person telling her what the rules are and telling her how she needs to live her life She's so steeped in the privilege, in the supremacy, that any check on that, anyone calling her out for needing to abide by the rules, well, there's a, there's a different law that they're going to be subject to. And she didn't acknowledge that part, the, the ease with which she was willing to discard another human being's life. Because at this point, everybody knows the story. I, I gave a TED Talk about it a year ago. I'm not saying she saw that talk, though. It might help on the margin. But she didn't go all the way in the apology. And what I want for the Amy's of the world is I want her to be able to have a conversation, not with uh, a civil rights leader, not with a black person who's got plenty of other stuff to do in their lives. Like I got a roasted chicken today, but for probably the white person in her life that she respects and adores, maybe a parent, maybe a best friend, maybe a sibling. There's a friend of Amy. And by Amy, I mean anyone like her who needs to sit down, look at this tape, and ask her some questions. When did you first realize you had this power? Why was it your first response to threaten to call the cops, tell them an African-American was threatening your life? Those are all trigger words for police violence, and you knew them without having to think. Where did you first see that behavior exhibited? When did you first learn that it was okay to do that? When was the last time you abused the power you have in such a way? We start to crack open those questions. We start to get white people to deal with whiteness and the power it confers upon them. Then maybe there's a shot that we can pull off this multi-ethnic, multi-racial democracy in the United States. But until then, this one by one incident, blowback, somebody loses a job, incident, blow, that's, that, that doesn't scale, as they say in Silicon Valley. White people talking to white people that y'all can talk to each other and we need you to do that. You need you to do that. Now, briefly to my bird watching brother, respect to you. We should probably come up with an NAACP image award, like a medal of honor for courage under fire and race relations. You stood your ground in a non-threatening moral way. You physically stood there. You morally stood there. You knew you were right and you gave us all an opportunity including the Amy's of the world and the friends of Amy's of the world to do better, to try to do better, to at least recognize what doing worse looks like and what abuse of power looks like. I want the Amy's of the world to not necessarily just give up the power, but use it for good. Use it on the border for some kid who's been separated from their parents. She could have done that, but she didn't. She wielded that weapon of white supremacy against somebody calling her out because she was actually doing wrong. That's all I got right now. Peace.